Uh, so, we're back at BET 2018, and I'm here with Philip Mehta. And you are the, how would I phrase your title? You're the Gosh. Ish. I'm an enabler. The enabler the for enabler. the microbit environment. Well, we, we all are, but yeah. yeah, but yeah, sure. I mean, I try to help organizations who are um, looking to do something with microbit yeah. and just help them uh, along the path, basically, as, as hopefully you'll attest. And just judging by the thing that we have behind yes. us, <laughs> there's an awful amount of microbits that has been deployed globally. Yeah? It certainly has, I mean, yeah. The travel from when you started out in the UK, uh, deploying for the UK context to where you are now is quite, quite a... It's quite a shift. So it, it has been a, an what, exciting year, yes. So, so what's happened this year with the microbit? Because I know from a Swedish context, sure. uh, the microbit has really come to explode in Sweden. There's a big interest. In, how, how, is it, how has the year been from your perspective? Well, it's been a fantastic year. Um, we couldn't have hoped for better. And, and my worry is that in telling you about the year, I will forget really key and exciting things. So apologies if there's anyone I do forget. Um, but I think, I think one of the most exciting things at the beginning of the year uh, was the interest we saw from Croatia. Yeah. Uh, now, Croatia is just one of many countries that has really adopted Microbit. Um, they did a Kickstarter. They, they? Did, and that's what I wanted yeah. to tell you about. Um, we, we knew we were sitting on something really exciting, um, but the response that we saw to the Kickstarter in Croatia just confirmed the kind of interest that would be there on the ground. And they, they set a target of about $60,000 and that was met in 24 hours. Their stretch target was met 48 hours later. And by the time they closed off the Kickstarter, they'd reached about a quarter of a million dollars. Wow. And no one expected it to take off like that. And I think that was one of the moments last year when we realized that, you know, with the right, um, with the right stewardship, this microbit can really do what we always believed it would do. And, and what was exciting was that we were finally seeing it happen after all the years of preparing and getting ready uh, for that moment. So, so there's quite a number of countries today oh, that has adopted loads. the microbit. Absolutely. Walk me through sort of which countries today sort of on a larger level sure. are going into working with this platform? Sure. Well, this, this is where I risk uh, forgetting to mention a country. Um, so let's start. I mean, we've seen obviously Iceland, um, it's well ingrained in their educational system um, and has been for a long time. Uh, obviously the UK too. Um, and then um, well, Singapore are doing a, a really large national uh, engagement at the moment. Um, in Croatia, the microbits are in 84% of all the uh, pre, uh, primary schools and also in a lot of libraries. Um, we're seeing a lot of activity in Sri Lanka, which you will hear more about um, at some point in the near future. Um, and, and the reception across uh, the APAC region um, has been absolutely phenomenal. So we're looking at some really big activity in Taiwan, uh, Hong Kong, China, um, but we're also seeing interest at an earlier level from all across the world. So keep your eyes on South America, there's going to be some really big activity this year. We expect Australia to take off, that's already very, very healthy. So what, what does it mean, I mean, now that you've become basically a deliverer of a global hardware for education. What does that mean for, for, for us who use the microbit? What? Well, well it, it's good news all around because we, we exist to uh, stimulate the ecosystem and to provide materials. And the stronger and healthier we are, the more materials we can produce, the more support we can give. I mean, last year there were six, six of us working at the time of BET. Um, we've now more than tripled in size. So our ability to get out there and help and produce things has gone off the scale as well. Um, now bear in mind, we don't sell microbits. What we do is we make sure the environment, the ecosystem is strong. So the, the good news is that, you know, the more microbit grows, the more our ability to support it grows, and the more materials, the more support, the more editor support will be in place for people who have adopted microbit. So it's an, it's, an, it's an ecosystem and we all flourish by people getting involved with Microbit. One thing that uh, has been a sort of important aspect, if I come from the Swedish perspective, is sort of the integration with the curricula and sort of getting a sense of ownership where yeah. the platform becomes meaningful in the context of that sure. particular ecosystem. So are there differences in these different countries yes. on sort of how you've gone about sort of 
it's support? A, very much so, and it's a really, really good question. Thank you. Um, I'd like to put an idea out there now, which which will come back to your question, and that is that what you think about the 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 uh, the box, the pencil case that you had as a child, and that had a pencil and it had a ruler, it had a set square. Now, what a lot of people are starting to see, and in particular, we've seen this coming out of the APAC countries, is that why wouldn't that pencil case have a microprocessor in it? In other words, we we are beginning to see a time when having a micro bit, but, but more importantly, generically, having a microprocessor is just something that every child expects to have in their in their pencil case. And just as an IT teacher might say, bring out your micro bit, so the art teacher might say, bring out your, your micro bit, or the maths teacher, or the, the D&T, the design and technology, or the sports science. You know, there is no reason why a microprocessor can't be used across all sorts of different subjects. But I guess you've seen quite a lot of different examples on that, depending, yeah, because different countries have different curriculas and yeah. there's different subject matters who sort of take it to them and adopt it and yeah. use it for, for different things. Well, there are two, fundamentally two approaches. And the one is the curriculum-based approach. Yeah. And that, of course, ensconces the micro bit in a particular curriculum and teachers then are obliged to use it. Yeah. And that's fantastic and we value that. But there is always a risk with that, that the micro bit will be seen to be limited yeah. to that aspect of the curriculum for which those materials are being produced. Yeah. Now, micro bit has much more potential than just being chapter three in your IT textbook. Yeah. And so what's really important is getting teachers trained and educated and comfortable using micro bit. Yeah. Because then teachers will start seeing how they can use it in their own lessons. So the lesson is not about micro bit. The lesson is about how technology can be used to create new art or to create amazing music. In different schools, when yeah. you deploy uh, the micro bit or any other sure. uh, platform such as this, but in your case the micro bit, in some cases the teachers that get trained, educated in the context, in other situations they basically get handed a piece of hardware. Yeah, sure. How do you see the difference there from your angle? And um, how would you sort of uh, want the educational sector to work given the, okay. these kinds of technologies coming into school? Well, I think first and foremost, the success of Microbit, but the su success of any education initiative at all, always hinges on the teachers. And the teachers have to be at the center of it. And we, you know, we've seen that time and time again across the world. Um, so whenever we are talking to an organization or, or an education department or a government, we always emphasize the importance of teacher training right at the center of it. So to answer your question directly, I mean, we're aware of in the UK, uh, there were some teachers who didn't have the confidence to take those micro bits into a classroom and then effectively put themselves in front of a bunch of kids without knowing necessarily enough. So, so what's really important is the teachers have the confidence to adopt the technology. Now, some teachers will just get it anyway, um, but for a lot of teachers, some education is necessary uh, and, and teaching them how to get the best out of it and how to go through the journeys. So I think, what's, I think, I think the, the best way to answer this is that in countries where there's a program of getting teachers involved, the adoption by the teachers is very, very high because their confidence is very high. In areas where there isn't that level of um, teacher training provided, then, then we are seeing the engagement of the teachers at a slightly lower level. Um, so, it, you know, it, it's always important to get the teachers on board, get them supportive, get them behind the initiative, um, and, and of course, you know, provide some training and materials that they can use uh, in the process. Teachers are, are so key. They are, our target market is children, um, but, but it is the teachers that, that help, and, and educators who help us to reach those children, and making sure they're confident, well educated in, in microbit or in microprocessors um, and aware of the fun factor. This is just really important to the whole success of, of everything we do. So looking towards 2018, what are your sort of hopes for the microbit for the coming year? Well we want to see it going from strength to strength um, and that's what we're set up to do. Um, we've restructured now so we have in individuals focused on different geographical areas. We have uh, a team in South America, North America, Asia, we're looking at Australasia, and of course uh, Europe and the United Kingdom. And so because we've had, we have more resources, we have more ability to focus in specifically, 
And so with that, we expect to see um, growth in areas where perhaps we haven't had time or resource to, to focus as much attention this year as we'd have liked. So really what we, what we had last year was an incredible demand and an incredible interest and a small team. This year we have incredible demand and interest and a larger team, so we hope to use that organically to grow the areas where people are already doing stuff and, and where there is an existing interest. Philip, great talking to you again. Thank you, Carl. Good to see you again. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right, cheers.